now that Nicolas Maduro has been successfully inaugurated, tomorrow everything changes. And the media is reporting it. In fact, almost every branch of the media is reporting the story the exact same way now. There has been a subtle shift. And in today's video, I'm going to point that out. We're going to cover a lot of um, text today, so it might not be the most exciting video, but it's going to prove to you beyond the shadow of any reasonable doubt there is no differentiation between the left and right media on this topic in North America. The shift is this. Instead of saying that we need to get rid of Nicolas Maduro because of evil, terrible, horrible socialism. Now they are shifting gears and saying we need to get rid of Nicolas Maduro because he is corrupt and there is corruption around him. No mention of socialism. No mention of the governmental style being the problem. The only problem being spoken of today is him personally and people around him personally doing criminal things. And that is a major shift. That has been something the left in North America has tried to hold on to, lest they be associated with Venezuela in any way, shape, or form. But now it's unanimous. This is about the most, this particular article, Wall Street Journal, not a uh, left-wing organization at all, talks about Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin and his most recent sanctions against Globovision. The U.S. Treasury Department on Tuesday sanctioned a Venezuelan network that allowed the owner of media giant Globovision and several state-connected business people to illicitly make billions of dollars in profits from the country's broken currency markets. Now, anybody who has followed the story from the beginning, this is what Nicolas Maduro has been trying to fight. He would agree totally, yes, the black market dollar is the problem, but his government isn't responsible for it. Now, they are making the allegation here that several quote-unquote state-connected business people are corrupt, hoping that you'll just kind of glance over that. They aren't making the allegation that it's the government itself. It's just certain state entities that are tangentially associated. And this is the reason we need to overthrow their government. Because, of course, we know there is no uh, state businesses attached to the United States or any other South American country that's corrupt in any way, shape, or form. little sarcasm there. The U.S. action is part of a comprehensive sanctions campaign, uh, our current administration officials said, is meant to pressure Nicolas Maduro into restoring democratic order and the rule of law. How would he do that? Just by leaving. That's their solution for him. Previous U.S. actions have detailed top Maduro regime officials running state-aided narco-trafficking and money laundering operations and widespread corruption throughout the government. That includes in the food program, Caracas says, is to aid starving population, but the U.S. alleges is used for political control. We do that here. Are you really going to make the allegation that there are no um, state-aided narco-trafficking and money laundering operations in the United States? CIA, BATF, IRS, FBI, I could go on. And of course in Colombia and Brazil as well. Heavily documented even recently, the Odebrecht scandal in the Panama Papers. Are we sanctioning Brazil? Are we sanctioning Colombia? Are we sanctioning Panama? Are we sanctioning Peru? No. But this is what they're hoping you're not going to read. And this goes through and just details the people. But nowhere in here do you see anything about evil, terrible, horrible socialism. And this is the Wall Street Journal. Now, let's go to the New York Times. You would think they for sure would have a different take, right? Well, they show a picture here of a soup kitchen, a Catholic church, that actually looks much cleaner and more well-run than most in the United States. And just to show, this is the, the New York Times. Just up here at the top. New York Times. So, 
So, sorry about that. We just had a notification. Um, okay, New York Times. You'd think that they would for sure be on board with a leftist government, right? Wrong. They're not. But they don't make any mention of the leftism. Now, this is something you might expect from the left. If there is an area that is controlled by the left that is having any kind of a problem, instead of going to the lengths to explain that it has nothing to do with the style of government, they would just rather jump on the train and say it's corruption. They want a new election. They want uh, someone else to be in charge as if that's going to keep people from starving. Violence and hunger have been have become, pardon me, emblematic of, of the years since he first took office. Inflation has skyrocketed and the migration of Venezuelans out of the country has reached unprecedented levels. Right, because in the previous years, everybody was leaving Colombia and going to Venezuela, the millions and millions and millions that the U.S. never told you about because of the drug war going on there. Far more Colombians have left Colombia and gone to Venezuela than have ever gone the other direction over the years. The issue in Colombia goes back to the 80s. This is five years. Now, down here, they actually do a little bit of reporting. Here they talk about mismanagement and corruption in the country's in the midst of crisis. And that, and here's something I think that a lot of people don't get. It's the difference between North Americans and South Americans. It says here, quote, despite that election officials said Mr. Maduro won 68% of the vote, the chaotic state of the country and the desperation of poor voters may actually have contributed to Mr. Maduro's ability to maintain control. What they're missing is this. Every time the United States comes out and says we're going to level sanctions against the regime in Venezuela, the people of that country rally around him. Because he's their guy. They know the U.S. is corrupt. They don't think this guy is perfect. They sure as hell know his government isn't perfect. But if they have a choice between imperfect and corrupt U.S. globalists running their country, or imperfect and corrupt leftist Nicolas Maduro running their country, guess who they're going to choose? They're going to choose their guy, just like you would here. You would vote for any American over any UN candidate, wouldn't you? No matter how bad it got here. And that's what the US is missing. It's their blind spot. They talk about arrests. They talk about mistreatment. We do that here. There's another article I'm going to bring up. I think it's the Reuters one where they talk about how one of the people they argued said, well, we know that these big businesses are hiding food just to blame the president. And this is Reuters. Same thing. Nobody is attacking socialism anymore. Nobody is attacking, you know, the idea of the Bolivarian Revolution anymore. They are attacking him personally and business associates around him. And I'm going to try to find that quote here real quick. Here it is. Under diplomatic isolation from the article of Reuters, I will put the link in the description. Sometimes it's hard to find food because businesses hide it and then say it's the president's fault, even though we all know that's a lie, said Graciela Laya, 43, a homemaker at a rally near the Supreme Court. And this does happen, and we've covered this. It doesn't matter who the president of the United States is. If your local Walmart decided they didn't want to adhere to the rules we have and just charge whatever they wanted on the first of the month when everybody got their food stamps, I guarantee you if they had, a, if the U.S. government stepped in and said, you can only charge $3 for bread, you can't jack up the price of food the day after we issue food stamps. And if we would allow them to close their doors like they do in Venezuela, what would you do? What if they had to wait? You know, they would just leave the doors shut until, you know, the second day or the third day or the fourth day. 
so that they could jack up the prices and charge whatever they wanted. See, the way U.S. Um, businesses get around that is they create these uh, fake high prices and then they put stuff on sale. And people are very much used to buying it on sale. And so what they do at the end of the month, they just get rid of the sale price, reinstituting the normal price. And that's how they make their profit, and they get around the laws that prevent this. Because this is what happened in Venezuela. They just didn't even put the food on the shelf and tried to blame it on the president. And I'm sure a lot of you are getting a good, healthy dose of let's blame the president for everything. And, you know, maybe I might be guilty of that to a certain extent. But the only thing that I'm trying to illuminate about him is that it's all about him. That's my only issue with the guy. If he would really come across as somebody who gave a damn it about anyone other than himself and his legacy and his personal brand of government, I might get on board with some things. But that's another argument for another day. But watch the media. Watch Fox. Watch the Wall Street Journal. Watch the both left and the right. They are going to be unanimous about this. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe.